We all know that governments want to control our behaviours. Sometimes they'll do this through force, and other times they'll use genius design, or other tricks, for example the illusion of control. Many of these are hidden in plain sight and trick you every single day, but you're none the wiser. So let's break them down, I'm Charlie, and today we're going to look at scary ways governments control your behaviour. Before we get into it, why not subscribe, and press the notification bell too. Traffic Light Buttons when you're crossing the street, I'm sure you go and press the traffic light button. Then you see the light change and you assume that's because of your behavior. After all, when you press a button, something happens, right? Wrong. Most buttons you see attached to traffic lights are simply placebo buttons. For example, did you know in New York, 91% of all traffic light buttons have been deactivated? That means when you press a button at a crosswalk, nothing really happens. These lights are simply on a timer, but governments like to make you think that you're in control. Heating controls in most offices are also complete placebos. You're able to press the button and it says the temperature is increasing, but in reality, it's all a placebo to make you think that you're in control. The same is true for elevator close buttons. Almost all of those have been deactivated as well and it's to make you feel like you're in control. The Mosquito the older you are, the less frequencies you can hear. For example, a 15 year old can hear many more sound frequencies than say a 50 year old. And governments are now using this to their advantage. This is through inventions like the mosquito. The mosquito was invented by a Welsh shopkeeper named Howard Stapleton. One day his daughter was harassed by local teenagers hanging around their local shop. So he invented a device which puts out a high frequency noise. Amazingly, you can only hear the noise if you're under 25. Anyone who's older than 25 won't have ears which can pick it up. That's because the frequency is simply too high. The device made loitering kids want to move away. That's because it sounds like a mosquito in your ear. It gave them headaches and hurt their ears, making them go away. Governments around the world now use devices like the mosquito. It's supposed to stop groups of young people gathering around and sometimes getting up to mischief. But many have called this device very antisocial and anti-young. Many teens have said they get nausea when they hear this sound. And some say the entire invention goes against human rights of the young. Cell phone towers. You may not realize this, seeing as everyone uses phones which are hooked up to cell phone towers. But ever since cell phone towers have been around, there have been people crying out to get them removed. Many say cell phone towers are actually bad for your health. Some scientists say that they're fine, while others don't. And many have also said that recent 5G towers may be bad for people. This has led to many of them being burnt down in large cities. For example, in the UK, 77 5G towers have been burnt down this month. Personally, I'm not sure if these are bad for you or not, but it does seem like governments will go to extraordinary lengths to hide them from you. Recently in Arizona, governments were caught disguising cell phone towers as cactuses. They've also been disguised as American flagpoles, for example at the College Station in Texas. In the United Kingdom, they disguised one as a fir tree. Palm trees have also been used as cell tower disguises and even modern art sculptures have been used as disguises. Controversially in Florida, a church cross was even used as a cell tower disguise. And there have been dozens of instances of trees being used as cell tower disguises as well. Now, maybe governments are just doing this because of the outcry. They don't want people burning these down thanks to wrong information. Or maybe they know they actually are bad for you and that's why they're hiding them. I don't know, but it really is suspicious. So when you're walking around, take a second look at that palm tree or that cactus. Maybe it's a cell tower. Fake CCTV Go to any major town or city and it's like you're living in 1984. There's pretty much CCTV cameras all over the place. We're all aware that most of China is completely filled with CCTV cameras. And even in more free countries, this is also the case. For example, in London, there are half a million CCTV cameras. But how many of the security cameras you see are real? Real cameras cost a lot of money, not only to make and install, but you also have to pay for a room to store the footage in. Also all of the screens and computers and a guy to watch the footage. That's why many governments will simply put up a fake camera. This will make you think you're being watched and stop you from doing anything they don't want you to do. The same is true for some speed cameras on the road. Many of these are fake, but if you break the speed limit, they'll emit a flash. But in reality, it won't even take a photo. They're just there to make sure you don't go over the speed limit. The tricky thing is though, there's no way to know which CCTV cameras and traffic cameras are real and which aren't. Anti-homeless designs. Homelessness is a big problem in most cities. Governments try to tackle this. But when I say tackle it, I don't mean fix the actual problem. 
Instead, they'll simply use tricks to make sure homeless people don't go to their cities. If you've ever seen these spikes outside stores or on streets, that's to stop rough sleepers. Many think they're to stop birds from perching there, but that's not true. One company in London even put sharp spikes outside their building to stop rough sleepers. But after a gigantic public outcry and a petition, they were removed. Subway music. In the 1990s, the city of Montreal, Canada had a problem. There were lots of gangs hanging out in their subway stations. So that's why they came up with a smart idea. This was to play classical music in the stations. They figured that young people dislike classical music. So if it's being blared out underground, they won't hang out there. It sounds like a silly idea, but it worked. Also, normal commuters won't get stressed out by crowded trains or delays. In the UK, McDonald's often played classical music late at night. This is to calm down anyone who's drunk too much. That's because it's a popular tradition in the UK to go to a McDonald's after drinking a lot. Camden Bench The Camden Bench was introduced in Camden, UK in 2012. People were confused as large concrete blocks appeared everywhere. It turned out they were actually benches. The design seems kind of ugly and a bit random, but in reality, it's very, very thought out. Every aspect of the bench is meant to control your behavior. The bench has no crevices, meaning dealers can't hide anything in them. There's also an angular design, meaning people can't skateboard across them. And this also prevents the bench from being slept on by homeless people. It also has a waterproof coating, meaning graffiti won't stay on it. This bench has received lots of criticism, mainly from people saying it's anti-homeless. But that has not stopped governments all over the world from buying into this bench and using the exact same design. Pink Prisons When you think of a prison, you think of a tough, scary place. That's why it may be confusing to see this Swiss prison. It looks more like a five-year-old girl's bedroom. But really, there's a lot of psychology and thought that goes into this pink prison. The psychological experiment began in 2013. That was when they painted 30 prison cells pink. The color's name is Baker Miller Pink, also known as Cool Down Pink. This color can apparently calm down even the most hot-headed criminals. Since then, some jails in the USA have also turned pink. This is based off research from Alexander Schnauss. He had 100 people hold their arms out in front of them. Their arms would then be pushed down. Amazingly, 90% of those people were weaker when they were looking at pink as compared to any other color. Football teams have even used this as well. The college football team at University of Iowa Hawkeyes has a pink changing room for the opposition team. This is to try and get their opponents in a passive mood before the game starts. Trash cans. Okay, trash cans are in pretty much every town and city, but did you know they're designed in a way to control your behavior? Many trash cans are slanted so that people can't sit on them. They also have very small openings. This is not a design mistake, instead it's to stop people from disposing of large items. This makes more people go to the junkyard rather than dumping it in a trash can. Anti-sticker streetlights. Look at many streetlights in cities and you'll see a range of colourful and interesting stickers on them. You may like this design, but governments don't. That's why some cities have odd plastic wraps over their streetlights. Some think this is to give people better grip when they're waiting for cars to stop while crossing the road. But no, they're to stop people putting stickers and gum on the streetlights. This may be good for stopping graffiti and gum, but not so good if you've lost something and you want to put up an advert. But now it's time to make your voice heard. Comment below which was the scariest way governments are controlling our behavior. If you want some more amazing videos, then check out my second channel. But as always, thanks for watching. There's some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.